dealing with Ben Johnson and the Lions this year in Green Bay as new defensive coordinator will be Jeff Halfley, who has left Boston College not as an assistant coach, as head coach, kind of like what, you know, I've been hearing over and over again. Chip Kelly wants out of UCLA, and he yeah. wants to be an offensive coordinator in the NFL again. Yeah. The Raiders are the one that he's currently looking at. I keep hearing it. That was rumor mill, senior bowl. Yeah. People, Chip Kelly wants back into the NFL. Chip, uh, Jeff Halfley. And what did – I thought – I thought the college head coach was like the best gig because you ran the town. They're starting to learn. They don't run the town anymore. When all of a sudden the players start to have some power and the head coaches get out of town. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're sick of that shit for lack of a better way to say it. <laughs> you know, they don't want to deal with there that. There are better ways to say yeah, it. Yeah. That there seemed like a good one. It, said, it. it seemed appropriate for a Thursday morning, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like, yeah, I, I understand it. You know, I understand school like UCLA, school like Boston College, Stanford, whatever. Schools where, you know, you know, sports are important. We know that, but it's not like the king of the school. I, it's going to be hard for a place like Boston College to compete in college football anymore. I, I think that's why Jeff Halfley looks at it this way and goes, wait, right? Like, we're not a super rich school. We're not like, you know, one of the year-to-year -year powerhouses. It was hard enough to get people to Boston College as it is, you know, fast receivers, running backs, those type of players. They haven't, you know, been able to do that. DBs, it's rare. Now, to get those guys, you got to be Ohio State, USC. Hey, we got millions. Hey, Texas, we got millions. Blah, blah, blah. Boston College, Stanford, more of the private institutions, they can't compete with that. And that's where I think a guy like that between, wait, the coaching, the rules, the babysitting, the players are making as much money as I am some cases now, or they want money, blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of coaches are like, yeah, I just want to go coach football. I'm going to go to the NFL where I can just do that, and I have to worry about the rest of this crap. On that point, here is Jeff Halfley from a recent podcast interview regarding the challenge of being a college head coach right now. I'm all for I'm all for players getting paid. I am. I, I, I think mm -hmm. it's great, right? That with the portal together is a complete disaster, which I think everybody has mm -hmm. said. Um, but there just needs to be rules, and there needs to be. I mean, look at the NFL. Everybody, you got a salary cap. You can use X amount of money, um, and there's some parity there. That yeah. that that league was built, right? You you you're the last place team. You get the first round pick. Yeah. So they want to be a competitive yeah. league. Yeah. And everything is built in the NFL to be a competitive league. We're going down a road where there's going to be more imbalance than ever. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Yeah. You're getting some teams that can really, really pull away. Yeah. And then you're getting some teams that you've seen over the last few years have had a lot of success. And you're going to start to see them fall off. And it's yeah. not, not because of lack of coaching. And it's not because of a lack of effort. But it's because what others are doing, it's just you're not on the same playing field. You're not yeah. playing in the same sandbox as some of those other teams. Yeah. And that's the part that that's hard. There's a lot that goes into it that being a head coach that you just, you would never think yeah. about. And now that I'm also the general manager and you're trying to manage the cap that you yeah. don't really know what the cap is and you're yeah. fundraising. And I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, I want to coach football. I know. I mean, I said to you earlier, like I want to coach more defense this year than I did last year. Yeah. And now it's just prioritizing like, how am I going to not do this? And I, I, I got to coach again. I miss, yeah. I mean, I miss coaching DBs, Yeah. but how am I going to do that? Yeah. And that's what I need to figure out. So look, this is the reality of the chaos that college football has deserved yeah. for years. Right. This is where we've gotten to because for years under the umbrella of the NCAA, they were able to keep the playing field equal because there was no differentiation financially from one team to the other. It was about where I'm going to live. Hey, you got to convince somebody to spend their winners in Boston, right? What kind of a team are we going to have? Where am I going to be on the bench? Am I going to be starting? Am I going to be a backup? Where, when do I get on the field? Those, how long is the head coach going to be here? Those were the considerations. Now it's just money, and that's fine. Money drives everything, pretty much everything. So now that this system is going sideways for college football and you have this gross imbalance with the schools that have the NIL funds available and those that don't, this is one of the 
great conflicts for me because I think it's long overdue for the players to get paid. But I know West Virginia University, 30 miles up the road from me, is going to be relegated to eight and four, win a bowl game. That's a pretty damn good year. And that's about all you can hope for now. You're never going to compete for a national championship. The days of being, you know, 13-9 to nine against Pitt away from playing for the national championship are over. Yeah. The days of going undefeated in the regular season and no, playing for a national no championship chance. are over. over. Right. They're over. Right. You'd but, have to strike Chris, gold. Here's the solution. Yeah. Here's the solution. Right. Pay all the players, unionize nationally, and create a system just like what the NFL has, yeah, a multi-employer bargaining unit right. where all the players are paid – they're all part of the same union. The rules are the same. They're student athletes who are also employees. What you've been fighting against for all those years is the only thing that's going to save it now and keep it from being a small handful of haves and everybody else just trying to get whatever scraps they can find. That's right. That's right. They got to do something. Like schools like Boston College, great respect. I. Like everything about it, love it. Northeast institution, love. They have no effing chance about competing with a school like Texas or or, or or Ohio State. They have no chance. They don't have the same money. It's just not even fair to ask that they can be in the same playing field. You know, of course, Texas is a huge school. There's oil money, and of course, it's it's a good school. So there's people from all facets of life, business, oil, whatever, who got a lot of money and give money. You know, again, like Texas, I can tell like here's a like a quick story. We needed an indoor facility, right, to practice football uh, my senior year because we had gotten word at Texas that Oklahoma was sending people down and watching our practices. So Mac Brown was like, damn, we need something to cover it up. Man, one of our donors paid fifty million and they built that thing for twenty four hours, seven days a week, and they got it up in like two months for the season to start. Like that that's what I'm just talking about, the money. I talked about this with Mac Brown a few weeks ago. He kind of said exactly what you said. Mac Brown's the head coach of North Carolina. He goes, I, I don't even like myself. He's like, I feel guilty. I'm, I'm asking a, a rich guy three, four times a year to go, can you give us more money? Can you give us more money? Can you give us more money? Like, that's not sustainable model right now in college football. So good for, good for Jeff Halfley to, to get out of there. I want to say, I've known this guy for a long time. Like, not friends with him, but grew up by me in New Jersey, went to a high school and, and, and played at a school that, you know, we, we used to play. I missed playing him by one year where he was like, he left school and then we played them the next year. They weren't on our schedule. He's been with Greg Sciano. He's been with uh, Shanahan. He's been with LaFleur, obviously, right? He's, he's a good defensive coach. I think he's going to actually be better in the NFL as a coordinator than he will in college because now he's going to be able to coach like he said, and he's got all these guys at his football all the time, and he can show his creativity. I think it's a, it actually really cool outside-the-box hire by uh, LaFleur and the Green Bay Packers. This is why college football has to get a solution in place sooner than later. You're going to lose good coaches. You're going to have programs that struggle – and they're trying to get Congress to give them some grand solution where the antitrust laws no longer apply. And I, I hope Congress doesn't give them what they're trying to get. They need to do what's right. What's right is when you have billions flowing through from the football programs. And I know it creates other issues, but the guys who are making the money are the ones who should be getting at least some of it. They currently get none of it other than what they can get on the side through NIL. Now, at least it's something. They need to start, as Jim Harbaugh has been saying, they need to start sharing with the players. The players need to be employees. There needs to be a nationwide union that negotiates terms where you have the same kind of rules you have in the NFL. You have the same kind of salary cap, the same kind of restrictions on movement. You have trades from one school to the next if the player is willing to be traded, et cetera. That's what they need to have to smooth this out. And there's going to be the schools that are doing well that don't want that. Now, the ones who are going to dominate this system don't want that, but everybody else is going to want it because it's the only way they're going to survive. We're going to take a break. When we return, Jerry Jones says the Cowboys are all in for next year, and one of his best players might be holding him to it. More PFT Live right after this. He wants him some glory hole. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.